You. Yes, you are taking the December SAT in three days. And if you don't know how to solve these five questions, your score is fried. And no, this is not your average predictions video. We've consistently predicted multiple questions every single SAT. So you clicking off this video means you're voluntarily tanking your score. So unless you don't want to see this pop up when you check your score, make sure you watch until the end. All right, getting started with question number one. In 2005, Astor earned 12% more than he did in 2004. In 2006, he earned 6% more than he did in 2005. And if he earned Y times as much in 2004 as in 2006, which of the following is closest to the value of Y? So right here in this problem, we can see that we're comparing across three years and we have three relationships we're dealing with. So we need to use systems of equations and specifically create three equations to tackle this problem. But before I do that, I first need to make variables to represent my three individual years. So let's say that his income in 2004 can be represented by the letter A and then for 2005, we can represent it by the letter B and C for year, the year 2006. Now, let's take a look at our relationships. Our first relationship is in 2005, which is represented by B. Aster earned 12% more than he did in 2004, which is represented by A. That means the total he earned in 2005, or B, is equal to what he earned in 2004, which is A, plus 12% of that total, which is 12% of A. That's our first relationship. Now taking a look at our second relationship, in 2006, he earned 6% more than he did in 2005. So in 2006, which is represented by C, he earned what he did, what he earned in 2005, which is B, plus 6% of what he earned in 2005. So C equals B plus 6% of B. And lastly, his income in 2004 can be compared to his income in 2006 by multiplying whatever he made in 2006 by Y. So 2004 or A equals Y times what he earned in 2006, which is C. So now to compute this, I'm actually going to use a tool called regression. So in Desmos for systems of equations problems, you can actually use brackets and a regression to compute the value of your variables. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. I'm gonna make two pairs of brackets and then I'm gonna use a tilde sign to set them equal. On the left side, I'm gonna place everything to the left of my equations. So these right here, and then I'm going to use commas to distinguish between each equation. So B comma C comma A. And then I'm going to map what I do on the left side to my right side. So B equals A plus 12% of A comma C equals B plus 6% of B and A equals Y times C. And when, you, and when you're using regression and you're dealing with X and Y, you have to attach a subscript of one to these specific variables. So it's actually going to be y1 times c. And now I can see that when I actually have all these typed into the Desmos, we actually get numbers for a, b, c, and y. And now all we need to see is what is the value of y. The value of y is 0 0.8423. Or in 2004, he made 84% of what he did in 2000 or what he earned in 2006, making our answer C. All right, moving on to question number two. The function h is defined by h of x equals all of that, where b and c are constants. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals h of x contains the points 2, 0 and 0, comma, negative square root of 266. If h of m equals 0, what is the greatest possible value of m? All right, so a good indicator that you can use regression to solve a problem is if you have a function with a couple points or equations listed, and we have all of that here. So we should use regression to solve this problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by typing in our givens into Desmos. We have h of x equals negative square root x squared plus bx plus c, and then we have 
h of 2 equals 0. Again, we're going to use that regression sign. So right now, we have two variables we want to find, b and c. And guys, whenever they give you a function and points, there's always going to be plugging in involved. So let's test your points to see if we can find b or c. Now, if we plugged in a 2 into h of x, we'd still be left with two unknowns because that will only take care of the x's. The b and c will still remain. And that won't really get me anywhere. But if I actually plugged in a 0, the x squared and the bx would also turn out to be 0, and I'd left I'd not be left with c alone. So that is actually something I can work with. So if I plugged in 0, my output would be negative square root 266. And then my input would be everything else is gone. So the only things that's left is negative square root c. And doing a regression tells us that c equals 266. So now that's another thing I'm going to define. And we can see that because we gave Desmos the right c value, it gives us the correct b value back. So now all we want is the greatest possible x value, m or m, that gives me a y value of 0. And if you zoom out, you can see that happens only when m equals 2 or when m equals 133. And since 133 is greater than 2, our m value would be 133. All right, moving on to question number three. And with this one, if you've taken the SAT, you've probably seen it at some point. It is one of the most common grammar questions out there, and it was actually just tested in the last SAT. And the reason they repeat it so much is because it gets so many people, especially new testers, every single cycle. So this is a must know. Regarding the question itself, I don't even care about the passage, what it has to say. It's a grammar question, so I only really care about the last sentence where I'm being tested on my usage of grammar. So I'm only going to read it from this part right here. For instance, in July 2021, a hypothetical basket of goods priced at 100 US dollars in the US would have cost 39 USD and 130 USD in fellow OECD, OECD, blank, and Iceland, respectively. So after reading that, we can deduce that our goal is to determine what punctuation is necessary to introduce the nation Colombia. And off the bat, what a lot of people do is they select option B the one with the colon, because they think that you're just introducing a list of nations after mentioning OECD. But that is incorrect. First of all, a colon must follow an independent clause. And the clause with fellow OECD nations is not independent. It can't stand alone because its description is directly tied to the nations. Right here, they say fellow nations, not the nations or anything definite where it would be appropriate to introduce a list. Because they're using fellow, which leaves ambiguity as to what nations are being referred to, these two phrases have to be connected because fellow OECD is a supplement. And a colon does the exact opposite of that by disconnecting the two, by saying that it's following an independent clause, which doesn't make any sense. But even more people, for the same reason, select the comma right here in answer choice C. Because one, they see one being placed right before respectively. And number two, if you're not really familiar with their grammar rules, then it does read well naturally. But the issue with the comma is that it wrongly treats Columbia as a non-essential piece of information, as if fellow nations already tells you exactly which nations we're talking about. But right now, we have no idea what nations is referring to, and we need that for the sentence to function because this whole phrase, fellow OECD nations, is acting as an adjective that is modifying these nouns, these proper nouns, these names. And to give you guys a more clear picture of non-essential clauses, we can actually work back to right here, the start of the sentence, where they use one. So right here, when you see information sandwiched between two commas, that's called non-essential information. So when that information is removed, you can actually still read the sentence and it works perfectly in terms of grammar. So if I got rid of in July 2021, for instance, a hypothetical basket, blah, 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 that does work as a sentence. July 2021 is only used to ensure that the user comprehends the sentence better. So applying that similar principle right here, if I plugged in answer choice C and I said in fellow OECD 
nations, comma, Colombia, and Iceland, that's basically telling a reader that you don't need that information for the sentence to work. So if I removed Colombia and Iceland, it would read in fellow OECD nations, get rid of that, respectively, blank respectively. And that does not read well as a sentence. That's because we don't know what the fellow nations are and we need to define that for this to be properly read. And for that, we cannot use any punctuation and so the answer would be D. Personally, when I took my SAT, this whole concept was pretty confusing to me. So I just memorized that the answer choice without commas with respect to the context of introducing names, people, or places in manners like this is always correct. So when I saw questions like this, I just memorized that. Don't use any punctuation. Just select the one without punctuation and move on. All right, moving on to question number four. This one tests your ability to apply your knowledge of asymptotes. This is a relatively new SAT question type. So this is something you should definitely have down before your next test. You have a function defined by that, a, b, c, or constants. When you graph it, it doesn't intersect the line x equals 5. And you have f of 7 and f of 9 being equal to 0. What is the value of a plus b plus c? So right here, I have two points. I have a function. I can do a regression. So I'm just going to type that into decimals right here. And then I'm going to perform a regression. So... And when I do that, we can actually see that I do get a function and a, b, c are clearly defined. But if I typed in x equals 5, the line I'm not supposed to cross, we can see that that parameter is unfortunately not met. So this is where your knowledge of asymptotes comes into play. For this function to not be able to cross the line x equals 5, it has to have a vertical asymptote at that point. And a vertical asymptote is basically a line that a function cannot cross. It can infinitely approach that line, but it just can't cross it. So this basically means that the denominator, when you plug in that vertical asymptote point, has to equal 0. So here the function in my denominator is 2x plus c. So 2 times 5 plus c has to equal 0. And that C value does that, and the c value that does that is negative 10. So when c is negative 10, my denominator is 0, which means I should have a vertical asymptote and the function wouldn't cross. And you can see that when I say c is equal to negative 10, this function actually does not cross this line x equals 5. Now we're good to go. We've got everything we need for the question. And so we can just type in a plus b plus c to get our answer of 37. All right, moving on to the final question of the video. The functions f and g are defined by the given equations where x is greater than or equal to 0. You have all these parameters. And when you graph it, which of the following equations displays the minimum value of the function it defines? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph these functions in Desmos. And then I'm going to assign the necessary domain restriction of x being greater than or equal to 0. So I'm not graphing more than I need to. Now, let me look at the parameters. A and B are integer constants. A is less than B, and A is greater than 1. Apart from that, we can choose A and B however we please. So since A has to be greater than 1, let me just say that A is 2. And since A has to be less than B, I'll just say that B is 4. So now we actually got some functions right here. And the question asks, which of the following equations displays as a constant or coefficient the minimum value of the function it defines. Well, what are the minimum values for these functions? If I look at f of x, it actually won't be clear. There's no minimum value because it constantly infinitely approaches the horizontal asymptote of y equals 4. But if I look at g of x, I do have a minimum value, which is 2. So I need 2 to be displayed as a constant or coefficient. My coefficient is a, my constant is b. Is 2 displayed as a constant or coefficient? Well, yes, a equals 2, which is a coefficient. So g of x does the job, which means b only, or b is a correct answer, and the second function is the only one that works in this case.